Who is Sir John Johnson? He was an American loyalist born in the valley, Mohawk Valley of the state of New York in 1742. He is the son of Sir William Johnson, first baronet of New York, a title which was given him by the King of England as a result of his efforts on behalf of the British during the Seven Years' War. It was a hereditary title, so when Sir William died in 1774, John, his son, became the second baronet of New York. He was also knighted by King George III in London in 1765 when he toured London for his better education. So he was both a knight and a baronet at the same time. Sir John, in 1812, already had extensive military experience because when he fled the Valley of the Mohawk in 1776, the first thing he did when he arrived in Canada was to create a regiment of provincial troops, which he named the King's Royal Regiment of New York, or the Royal Yorkers. They extensively uh, brought campaigns to uh, the Mohawk Valley, particularly in the spring and in the fall of 1780. He was, after the war was completed, he um, became a brigadier general in charge of the militia in western Quebec. In 1812, he was by then the colonel commandant of the six battalions of the Eastern Township Militia, a position which he had held since 1804. Sir John was also a Mason, a tradition which he had started in the Brotherhood in New York. And he became, while in Canada, the Provincial Grand Master of the Quebec Grand Provincial Lodge. He was also a legislative counselor appointed initially in, uh, before the separation of Quebec into two provinces. Uh, he served until 1791 and again was appointed legislative councillor in 1797. So in 1812, he was also serving as legislative councillor, which often took him to Quebec City. He was the senior of Argentay, of Munwa and parts of Chambly, which uh, with other land holdings in both Lower Canada and Upper Canada, uh, created a pool of tenants and settlers that saw action uh, in the militia, both in Upper Canada and Lower Canada. Many of the uh, soldiers and militiamen of the six battalions of the Eastern Townships were in fact uh, settled on lands which he was the senior, also in lands which he had helped to settle after the war. He served as the superintendent of refugees, which enabled him to place, among others, his former soldiers along the north shore of Lake Ontario, and some as far as Baie de Chaleur in, uh, in Gaspé. In 1812, uh, Sir John was 70 years old, already a good part of his life uh, behind him. He resided in a substantial stone house on St. Paul Street, across from the Bon Secours Church, and where the site today is in the uh, eastern portion of the Bon Secours Market. It was a property that served also as the office of the Indian Department, of which he was superintendent, which caused some uh, difficulty for him. At one point, he asked that he be allowed the opportunity to open a separate office because a native Indians were forever coming into his house unannounced and proceeding to his offices. So in 1812 then, we find Sir John as superintendent of Indian Affairs. We find him as head of six battalions of militia in the Eastern Townships, legislative councillor, 
singer of three major properties in Quebec, and still ready to serve. We'll now proceed to look at the military contributions of his extended family, because apart from Sir John himself and the role he played in the War of 1812, his extended family also uh, had an important, uh, played an important role as well. First of all, his sister, Anne, or better known as Nancy, was married to Colonel Christian Daniel Klaus, who with his son William were in charge of the Indian Department in the Niagara region, the very important element in the war in Upper Canada. Sir William, his father, after uh, Sir John's mother died, subsequently married a native Mohawk named Molly Brandt, sister of Joseph Brandt, with whom he had a number of children. Four of his daughters married or were uh, associated with military during the War of 1812. Elizabeth married Dr. Robert Kerr, military surgeon in the Niagara region. Margaret, Captain George Farley of the 24th Regiment. Susanna to Lieutenant Henry Lemoyne, 60th Regiment. And Nancy, who married Captain Hugh Earl of the Marine, Provincial Marine, who became the Commodore of Lake Ontario, all of whom were uh, residents of Kingston at one stage and who played an important role in the War of 1812 in Upper Canada. Prior to marrying Mary or Polly Watts, Sir John uh, took up with a young lady named Clarissa Putman in the Valley of the Mohawk, with whom he had two natural children, a boy named William, who followed in his father's footsteps to become a military, and who in 1813 recruited to become a captain in the Voltigeur Canadien, which Michel de Salaberry was uh, the commandant. During 1813, four companies of the Voltigeurs were sent to Upper Canada, one of which was William Johnson's. So during the War of 1812, Sir John's natural son, William, uh, saw action in Upper Canada with the Canadian Voltigeurs. Along with him, he had two brothers-in-law, Simon and William Clark, so that an extended family went as far as to include those individuals as well. The children of Sir John and Polly Watts. A number of children uh, of that marriage were involved in the war. Anne, or again Nancy, his first daughter, married Colonel Edward MacDonnell, who was in 1812 the quartermaster general of the army in British North America. He was responsible, therefore, for all the, the materiel, if you will, uh, that the British Army uh, had to deal with in Upper and Lower Canada. Unfortunately, he died on October 30th, 1812. His firstborn son, William, who had returned to Canada and who was Lieutenant Governor of the Garrison of Quebec, inspecting field officer of militia, unfortunately died early in January of 1812. Adam Gordon, his uh, next son, was secretary in his Indian department. He was colonel of the 6th Battalion of the Royal Eastern Townships Militia, a battalion which uh, basically recruited from uh, individuals who were tenants of uh, Sir John in Manoir and also uh, in parts of Chambly, which he uh, uh, had dominion over. Later, uh, he became Deputy Superintendent of Indian Affairs and Lieutenant Colonel of a body of Indian warriors, a new military Indian organization which was created by the governor in 1814. John Jr., 
who resided in a manor house which Sir John constructed in saint mathias sur richelieu which still exists today, uh, and which was uh, transferred to John by Sir John in 1818, was major and later lieutenant colonel of the 6th Battalion, succeeding his brother Adam. The next son, James Stephen, was a captain in the 28th Regiment, aide-de-camp to his brother-in-law, Major General Barnard Ford Bowes, who had married his sister and who was campaigning with Wellington and the Salaberry at the battle or a siege of Badajoz, where he was killed during the storming of that fortress on the 6th of April, 1812. During that storming, Major General Bowes was also wounded, although not dangerously. In the same uh, conflict, uh, Lieutenant Simcoe, who was the son of the former Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada, was also killed the same day, along with the youngest of uh, the Salaberry children, who was in, in the Royal Engineers. So it was quite a, a disaster for uh, not only those families, but a great number of others who uh, died at the battle or the siege of Badajoz. Catherine Maria, she uh, married Colonel Bowes, who subsequently became the Major General, and who subsequently uh, was wounded at Badajoz. While he was Commander-in-Chief in Lower Canada, uh, prior to uh, his departure for uh, the war with Wellington. Robert Thomas, captain in the 100th Regiment, was stationed at Illinois and unfortunately drowned there while returning to service at the end of March 1813. Charles Christopher served with the Dragoons, but during the War of 1812 was abroad during that conflict. The youngest boy, Archibald Kennedy, a lieutenant in the Canadian Fencibles, was authorized to recruit for a new uh, provincial corps, the Glengarry Fencibles, but unfortunately was unable to recruit the quota he required for his captaincy and therefore returned to the Canadian Fencibles and later replaced his brother Adam as secretary of the Indian Department. Others related to uh, Sir John, who were involved in the war, Philip Byrne, the son of William Byrne, a former captain in the King's Royal Regiment of New York, who became Sir John Johnson's intendant in Argentai and Manoir and Chambly. In other words, who looked after the collection of his quit rents uh, and looked after all of the uh, business aspects, if you will, the mills that were constructed, uh, the arrangements with millers, etc. Philip Byrne uh, was the barrack master at Fort St. John's in 1812. He was also an adjutant to the 6th Battalion of uh, Eastern Townships Militia and ultimately gave all that up to become a captain in the 2nd Battalion of select embodied militia, of which there were five created, again with many representatives from many of the parishes that were located within Sir John Johnson's seigneuries. Jacob Glenn, again another uh, loyalist from New York, who served as adjutant to the uh, Royal Eastern Townships Militia, and who located and subsequently established himself in Chambly. John Molson, brewer and owner of a steamboat, the Swiftsure, which he put into uh, navigation in the fall of 1813, it transported military personnel, prisoners of war. American prisoners of war were transported on the Swiftsure, as were deserters 
and as was substantial material de guerre. He didn't make a fortune, but he did very well during the war with the transportation on board the Swiftsure. Molson, as a soldier, also contributed to the uh, war as a captain in the 5th Battalion of Select Embodied Militia. He saw, <clears throat> didn't see action, but he was on duty at Coteau du Lac, at Cascades, and at La Prairie during the course of the war. On Sir John Johnson's wife's death, Lady Johnson, in 1815, Sir John sold his house on St. Paul Street to John Molson, who refashioned it into a very fine hotel called the Mansion House Hotel. It also became the seat of uh, an opportunity for uh, receiving his passengers on his steamship line that ran between Quebec and Montreal. Sir John Johnson subsequently built a house in the St. Mary's suburb across from the brewery, a house which was uh, subsequently, after his death, owned by his daughter and ultimately sold to one of John Molson's grandsons. So there's a quite a close link between John Molson and Sir John and his family. Louis de Salaberry, the father of the hero of the Shadow Gate, was also closely allied with Sir John Johnson. He was a deputy superintendent of Indian Affairs for the District of Quebec. They had also done campaign together, interestingly enough, in 1777, when the provincial troops went to, uh, along with the British, went to Fort Stanwix, part of the unsuccessful uh, campaign by John Burgoyne, which ultimately led to his surrender at Saratoga. The important role by the Native Indians during the war, often overlooked, but very important. And it was the role which, in part, was the responsibility of Sir John Johnson as the Superintendent of Indian Affairs. Indians were present at La Colle in 1812 to help repulse the Americans at that time. They were also present at Shadowgate during the uh, battle on the 26th of October, 1813. Interestingly enough, on October the 5th, 1813, Vassal de Montviel, who was the adjutant general of militia, ordered Sir John Johnson to repair immediately to Kaknawaga and to have all the warriors who were available there sent to the Shadow Gate. Obviously, there was an intention of attack by the Americans, and so Sir John was sent to Kaknawaga to free up the warriors and to do the same for the warriors from Lake St. Francis area. As well, at Chrysler's farm, not only were there Voltigeurs present there, but there were also Indians present under the leadership of officers of the Indian Department, who Sir John Johnson ultimately supervised. What is interesting to me at times as well is to see the implication of the use of the two languages, the British, who were English, obviously, and the contribution by the Canadiens, largely French-speaking, and what that meant to the uh, War of 1812. In fact, there's an interesting anecdote with uh, Sir John Johnson. Uh, at one point, the uh, Adjutant General of Militia had issued orders to Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Luke uh, of one of the battalions of the Eastern Townships Militia in French. Offended, Luke sent back the orders and said, if you wish to communicate with me, please send me the orders in English. This raised a, a storm at the headquarters, obviously, and so there was an issue taken who should get the orders in English and who should get the orders in French? And ultimately, Sir John was consulted, to which he responded, it makes no difference to me. A clear indication, I think, that he was clearly bilingual and could operate uh, in either language. Despite his age, in uh, the fall of 1812, Sir John volunteered himself for active service an offer which unfortunately was not accepted, and which 
I think, left him somewhat concerned. In December of 1812, appointments were made to his department without being consulted. And in the spring of 1813, uh, it seemed as though he was just simply an administrator and was not called upon uh, to be actively involved. In fact, uh, on the 8th of July, 1813, he wrote a letter complaining about his lack of involvement to the adjutant general. He it was written from Montreal on the 8th of July. Having done everything, everything in my power to bring the six battalions of Eastern militia into some kind of order and having nothing further to do, and then in parentheses he puts, not, having, not being employed on active service, other than to copy and forward orders, I beg leave to decline any further service at this time, which you will please to communicate to the governor-in-chief. A very strong comment about his usefulness and to ask that his offer to decline any further service be brought to the attention of Governor Provo a pretty clear indication of that. Notwithstanding his request, uh, Sir John was kept in function uh, to the end of the war and continued to act as superintendent of Indian Affairs until shortly before his death in 1830. He was also responsible uh, and involved in the formation of two frontier light infantry companies, uh, the first and most important of which was uh, headed up by Captain Ritter, formerly of the 100th Regiment, uh, two companies which saw action with the Canadian Voltigeurs under uh, Charles Michel de Salaberry. In conclusion, uh, one can see that not only Sir John himself, but extended members of his family and people with whom he had a relationship were involved in the War of 1812, and it's a credit to Sir John uh, that he and his family uh, chose to participate in that way. Thank you. Thank you.